Sid, it's funny, isn't it? You think of Jose Mourinho, that you think of pragmatic defensive football. It's quite extraordinary you look at what he did at Real Madrid, of course, ending that run of Pep Guardiola's team. Not only doing it, but doing it in such record-breaking fashion. Yeah, and of course he's always very keen to remind people of that, not least because he believes, as you've just said in the introduction there, that this is something that gets overlooked. That he believes that at times some of the accusations of, of, of a style or of being defensive or of not really wanting his team to attack have not been fair. And of course the best possible evidence he can put forward is, as you say, a 100-point season, 121-goal season. Now, of course, there are different ways of playing attacking football. And, and the context of this was partly that this is the, the, the era of that great Barcelona team, the era of Spain winning the World Cup and the European Championships twice. And so that while they played attacking football with possession and with close short passing that Mourinho team which was very very attacking at Real Madrid was also very direct indeed they I don't think I have for a very long time seen a team master the art of the counter-attack quite that like that team did now on the face of it of course it seems absurd to suggest that a team that scored 121 goals were good on the counter but they really were they, they were very very quick to release the ball they were incredibly fast up front they were very clear in their ideas they were very there's a great phrase that gets used a lot in spain vertical and it doesn't necessarily mean vertical in terms of long ball but it means that every time you get possession you're trying to go forwards and, and that team I particularly remember them, them picking up a, a huge amount of momentum from the back end of January all the way through to the to the end of March, going into April, even the final weeks of the season. And they re went on a run of kind of seven, eight, nine wins in a row where they were just relentless week after week. And they weren't always absolutely sparkling, but they just kept on coming at you. And I think in the end that teams couldn't deal with that. Now, of course, in part, that's a product of the quality of the players they had, and they had a fantastic squad at the time. But it was also because I think that was the one season when Mourinho was in Spain, where he managed to kind of get all of the pieces to fit into place, where he'd managed to get the continuity, and I think managed to convince the players that this was really going to work. And as I say, from the spring into the early summer, that Real Madrid team was absolutely fantastic. What's his reputation like in Spain now, Sid? Fast forward to 2020, considering what's happened at Manchester United and, of course, most latest at Spurs. Well, I mean, th th there's two elements to this. One of them is, as you say, considering what's happened at United at Sp and Spurs. And the other, of course, which is probably more powerful in terms of the perception of him, is what happened at Real Madrid, particularly in that final season. And I've said lots of times, and I'll continue to say it, that Jose Mourinho stayed at Real Madrid a season too long. A season that he didn't enjoy, that the players didn't enjoy, that no one truly enjoyed. And I think we all felt that if only gone sooner, the, the judgments might have been slightly different. Um, but as you say, since then, of course, there's been two failed or well one failed at Manchester United and one where we're still not sure how it'll end at Spurs and I think that has reinforced the detractors of Mourinho in Spain that sense that maybe this isn't such a good thing but there is and never under, underestimate this there's a very significant proportion of Real Madrid fans who really hanker after a return from Mourinho, not just in terms of him being successful, also in terms of uh, kind of like identity and an attitude and this idea that he's the only person that can kind of take on, if you like, the, the powers in Spain, take on the dressing room, that can have some of the personality that certain sections of the Real Madrid fans want. That said, as we've talked about before, there are other sections of the Real Madrid fans who think that him coming back would be an absolute disaster. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.